What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overload here. So this will be a spoiler free review for the Marvels, which is essentially Captain Marvel 2 since it's a sequel to Captain Marvel, but it's also a it's also a follow up to I believe Secret Invasions, Miss Marvel, WandaVision, I believe, all of the shows that I've moderately watched. I haven't even finished all of those. But it's a sequel to Captain Marvel still nonetheless. It is being directed by Nia DaCosta who co-wrote the screenplay along with Megan McDonald and Elisa Karasik. It stars Brie Larson, Tiana Paris, Iman Vellani, Zawi Ashton, and Samuel Jackson. This is revolving around the Marvels. While investigating a wormhole linked to the Kree, Monica Rambeau's powers become entangled with those of Kamala Khan and Carol Danvers. The trio team up to determine why they are swapping places with each other every time they use their powers. Now, I will say I thought that Captain Marvel was pretty forgettable and lackluster. I did revisit it yesterday. For those of you who follow me on Twitter, I revisited the film to see if it still was the same sentiment. And it was the same sentiment. It actually got a little bit worse of a sentiment for me on a fourth viewing as of that time when I watched it last night. Brie Larson, I didn't find her to be very convincing in the role, but the buddy cop stuff between herself and Samuel L. Jackson was one of the more favorable aspects of that film. That movie just failed to give me a reason to care about Carol Danvers because she seemed unfazed and void of any real struggles beyond amnesia for me to kind of latch onto her and see her as relatable. I thought the film was totally all over the place as well, but I want to start that off before I get into my thoughts on the Marvels because I don't really talk about the MCU all that much on my channel, but I think it's very evident by the intro of my channel that I'm a big fan of superhero movies. So it's a step in the right direction for the Marvels in terms of this being way more entertaining than its predecessor, and I did have fun with it overall, but almost every aspect of the story that isn't humorous falls flat. If the Marvels were strictly a comedy or a highlight reel of thrilling action sequences, which it does possess with, I would say, amazing choreography, then this would be a home run. Sadly, that's not solely what this film is. Kamala Khan, Carol Danvers, and Monica Rambeau, who is Carol's niece for those unaware, make up our titular trio and are fairly likable for the most part. Even Danvers, who again, I feel was hard to connect with during Captain Marvel, but liking them is only half the battle. And for those worried about not understanding, the Marvels does enough from my perspective to catch you up to speed on Monica and Miss Marvel if you're absolutely unfamiliar with those two characters. Anyway, the screenplay just fell flat because it's so plot driven and barely does anything with its characters in terms of giving them struggles for me to really latch onto. Again, I had this same problem with Captain Marvel. It has moments where Captain Marvel is trying to reconnect and make up for lost time with Monica, and I just couldn't care less. A lot of that is due to Captain Marvel's own failures to make to make Carol's relationships on Earth worth caring about. So now the Marvels is trying to flesh out relationships I already couldn't care less about, and it's still not working in this sequel. The, the Monica is visibly upset at times with Carol because of the fact that she abandoned her. And when I should be able to connect with the struggle, I just can't because of the fact that the previous movie fell flat and now you're trying to flesh it out more here and it's not working. That bond is slowly repaired as the Marvels progresses and it just didn't register once it was all said and done. Not one bit of it. The stakes are there for the conflict, but I never felt like any of these characters were in any real danger due to the film being too campy at times, I guess. Like on one end, the comedy kept me entertained and on the other end, I'm unable to find any reason to take the conflict serious as a result of this campiness. Darbin, a warrior trying to restore Hala, who serves as the villain, if you want to even call them that, is just so forgettable and a complete afterthought in regards to the story. Darbin blames Carol for the fall of the Kree Empire, but the film never does anything to convince me to take this threat serious. So all of Darbin's heinous actions in the film, they don't even assist in making the character menacing in any capacity. It's just a very messy screenplay that stays afloat thanks to the laughs that it offers consistently, especially the cats. But the rest of it probably could have benefited from a longer runtime in order for everything to get a chance to breathe and be fleshed out and for me to actually sink my teeth into it and for some of the characters to actually be given some depth along the way besides just saying, okay, here's the conflict, let's go after it. But I will say that Brie Larson actually wasn't terrible here. Her delivery, I would say, was the worst of the trio still. 
she does get a chance to show more of her acting chops here as opposed to the weaker performance in Captain Marvel. For the record, I do not think that Brie Larson is a terrible actress, but certain roles just are not for everyone. Iman Vellani and Tiana Paris do a far better job in their roles, but who is shocked about that? All of our leads have chemistry in their scenes, so that aided in keeping me invested in this trio, despite two thirds of the trio having that rift that I struggled to latch onto that I referenced earlier. Zoe Ashton is convincing enough as Darbin, despite the Marvels completely squandering any threat that this character should pose. Nia DaCosta did a solid job directing, but I do prefer Candyman over this latest outing. Surprise, surprise. The quick pacing doesn't always work because like I mentioned, this movie needed to breathe at times, especially when it comes to allowing the conflict to actually feel significant and like it has any sort of consequences. I know that it does because the movie is telling me it, that it does. But the film also doesn't do a complete, it doesn't do a great job at selling it is what I'm trying to get at. So when I look back on the Marvels, was it a complete dud? No. It just also wasn't one of the more impressive entries in the MCU. I get that this film has been plagued with reshoots and a lot of online controversy from people who are arguing about stuff that really doesn't matter at the end of the day when it comes down to what is on my screen. And this is just simply about what was on my screen. While I had fun with it, I wouldn't mind turning it back on again and revisiting it. I can't see myself revisiting this movie anytime soon. You guys can let me know what you think about the Marvels down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, seen the movie, when you do get to see it, let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. I would honestly give it a 6 out of 10. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications. You never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links on my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.